Hey everyone, it's John here, and in this video we're going to take a look at how we can automatically add an external user to our Microsoft Teams via a Microsoft Form. This way you can set up a Microsoft Form and share with people outside your organization, and then automatically add anyone who submits that form into your team. So for this demo, I've got a form set up here, and it's got input for a person's name and their email. Now notice these are just text fields, so this does rely on the user correctly inputting their email. So there is no validation for that in Microsoft Forms. Now for this, you are going to need at least the email. And a name is also helpful too, as that's going to be displayed in Teams. So that's going to be their display name. But you can also collect other information too if you want with this form as well. Now once you've got your form set up, you're going to have to go to the settings. And then you can select this option here so that anyone with the link can respond. And that way you can send this to people outside your organization and add external users to your team. Now to actually add the users, we're going to use Power Automate to, once someone submits this, to automatically add the user. If I head over to my team, so I've got this demo team set up here, and I've already added a guest user. So when you have a team, you can come to this menu here and add members. And when you do, if you take a look at your users in your admin center, you'll see that the guest you add has this user principal name right here. And so this is the email that you add and then this extension tag and then your tenant domain. So here, my tenant domain is howtoexcel.onmicrosoft.com. That's the default domain. I also have a custom domain set up, so I could also create users with howtoexcel.org. Now here, the email address has the at symbol replaced with an underscore, as that's not a valid character in this part of an email. So when we're setting up our user, we could use any username or user principal name here but we just need it to be unique and have our domain at the end. So let's head over to Power Automate. So flow.microsoft.com and we're going to create a flow. So we're going to create an automated flow here. And what we want to do is whenever someone submits that form, we want to add them. So let's use this trigger here when a new response is submitted. Let's also give this a name. and create our flow. Now we just need to select our form. So mine was called add teams external user. Now when this is triggered, this doesn't actually contain the response in the form. We need another step to get that information. So here we're going to search for forms and select that. And there's only one action, so we need to we need to use the get response details. That's going to allow us to get the response details from our submission here. So we need to select the same form. And here we can use dynamic content from this submission trigger. So here we can use the response ID from that submitted response to get our response details. Now that we've got that, we can set up our team user. Let's just save this and let's add a new step. And here we have Microsoft Teams actions. If we take a look at that, uh, we have various options here. And so one of them is to add a member to a team, but first we actually need to create the user in order to add that user as a member and that's not in our Microsoft Teams connector. It's actually in our Azure Active Directory. So let's search first for Azure, and we're gonna use this connector, Azure Active Directory, and that's gonna allow us to create a user inside our tenant to then add to Teams. So here we got the action, create a user, that's the one we need. And here, the first option, we need to have an account enabled. 
And then here, the display name. So this is the name that's going to be displayed in our teams. And we're going to use the dynamic content from our form from the name that the person inputs. We also need this mail nickname. And when I was testing this out, I found that space characters weren't allowed. So the flow would fail if I had space characters. So let's just have a short mail nickname. Let's call it guest. We also need a password and this password needs to comply with your tenant security settings. So generally something with some numbers and letters and some special characters will be good enough. And then we also need to generate a unique user principal name for this user. So this is where we could potentially use this kind of a pattern to add as a user principal name. So let's actually just copy this and I'm going to paste it in here. And instead of this first part here, we're going to generate that based on our form entry. So we first need to do a little bit of string manipulation for that. So I'm going to come up here and add an action. And I'm going to add a compose action to do this. And we are going to be using our dynamic content from our email. And I'm just going to select this and cut it. Then I'm going to go into my expressions. And one of the expressions that's available is replace. So this is going to allow us to replace a character in our string with another character. So we're going to replace that at symbol in our email with an underscore. So first thing is the text we want to replace in. And I just copied that. And actually, I'm just going to select all this stuff, cut it, and head over here into text editor where we can see this a little bit better. So this is the dynamic content for uh, the email. And I'm just going to undo that. And you can see it's surrounded by these curly braces and an at symbol. We're just going to get rid of those. And then in our replace function, the next argument is the character or string that we want to replace. And then the last argument is the thing we want to replace it with. So we're going to replace our at symbol with an underscore and we're going to replace it in our response email. So let's just copy and paste that expression in here. Now, a little trick is if I encase that in those curly braces and the at symbol, then I'm just going to be able to avoid this expression editor and just come in here and paste it directly as an expression. I'm also just going to quickly rename this to email. And now we can use it in here. So let's use that dynamic content, the email outputs. And that's going to create a pattern just like our guest user that's automatically created when we add one in Teams manually. Now let's add our next step. And this is where we're actually going to add the user into Teams. So we created the user and now we're adding them into Teams as a member. So let's use this action here, add a member to a team. Here we need to select our team that we're going to add them into. So I'm going to add them into my demo team. And we created the user here, and that's where we're going to get our ID from. So with the dynamic content content from our create user step, we get an ID. And here we can choose whether they are a member or an owner. So the new member should be an owner. Let's select no. If you leave that out, it'll just be a member. So let's save this. And let's try it out. So we're going to 
go back to our form and actually fill in our form. Let's go to preview mode so we can use our form here. I'm gonna fill something in here. So someone outside our organization can come in and fill in their name and their email here and hit submit. Now let's go to our flow. And we can see that that ran and it ran successfully. Let's head over to Teams. And I'm just gonna refresh this by switching back and forth to the Members tab here. And you can see that I've got a new member here in my Teams. So that's the entry, John, that we just submitted. Now, when you manually add a user, they're gonna get an email notification about it. We could add into our automation the same thing here so they don't get an email notification about the being added to the team, but we could add that as a step in our automation if we want to. So that's how you can automatically add external users to Microsoft Teams via Microsoft Forms. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future videos like this one. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.